Uh, welcome everybody to um, Deneen Fine Arts Center's virtual space. Um, today we're so excited to be speaking and uh, with all the award-winning artists from Spirit Animals. Um, obviously, we'd love to hear from all the artists in the show, but that would take um, maybe a couple of days. So we are going to speak with our award-winning artists. Um, and we, we're also so pleased to have our judge, uh, Elizabeth Brinklow, with us. Um, just a quick social media awareness campaign here. Um, you can always find us on Instagram and also on Facebook at this special group page, um, DFAC, uh, One World, I'll show you mine if I show you yours. <laughs> and um, and we're, of course, so thankful for Catherine Bergman, our lead curator, who comes up with so many wonderful ideas and um, keeps us so connected to our wonderful community. Catherine, how are you? Good, good. Thank you, Nathan. Yes. We, uh, again, uh, as often and always, it seems, we had a tremendous response to this theme. So I thought I would just read for the benefit of those unfamiliar with what our call to the community was. And that was to show us your spirit animal. Native cultures worldwide have relied on the guidance, wisdom, and symbolism of spirit animals for thousands of years. So your spirit animal often represents qualities and attributes that you may see in yourself. It is believed that you do not choose the animal, rather it chooses you and is there to provide medicine to the recipient in the form of guidance, lessons, protection, power, or wisdom. So this was a two and 3D media call. We had no size limitations and we did have a spectacular bird sculpture, Gertrude, who was prime, primary presence in our atrium uh, made by Sandy Schenker. Um, and then of course we had a guest judge and that was Elizabeth Brinklow, who we were so grateful accepted our invitation. And if I can, I will just give a little bit of background on Elizabeth. She brings a strong background, reputation, and experience as an arts leader and visionary to her work with artists, arts organizations, and government. Through her uh, named business, Elizabeth Brinklow Arts LLC, multiple projects have included the curatorial service pop-up Trend On with Mary Child's projects, which offers all aspects of art procurement with unique access to national and regional visual artists. A recent success was registering and placing artists in the State Department of Art and Embassies program, which Nathan was a part of. And Elizabeth proudly serves to advance arts and culture as the arts consultant for the city of Dunedin. And we will get to hear more from Elizabeth. And I have known Elizabeth for many, many years, and she has been a, a key ally with the development of the Dunedin Fine Arts Center, bringing her background in theater design. Um, she's also a writer, a playwright, but she helped design our children's theater space. And she and her husband Zeke have been wonderful allies and sustainers to DFAC's creative community. Welcome, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you so much, Catherine. I was really honored to, to judge the, the work um, Spirit Animals exhibition. I, uh, I had great anticipation when I was um, first you know, entering the space. And even before I, I share my thoughts about the show, I'd like to recognize that we are on the land of the Tokabaga Indians, and uh, they have uh, influenced not all of my work, but some of my work, uh, and also um, 
uh, the Native American tribes that are in Utah, and I spend a lot of time in Utah. So this particular subject matter was uh, of great importance to me um, and certainly hit, um, hit my heartstrings, which gave me more anticipation about entering the space and, and uh, anticipation about how I was going to select uh, merit awards and and the other um, uh, placed awards. Um, but first impression uh, entering the space, um, I really allowed the art uh, to bathe me um, as I entered and walked through the various spaces, um, taking in the colors and the variety of mediums, photography, oils, acrylics, um, fine textile fiber arts, uh, sculpture, uh, and the many choices that represented the theme of the exhibition, um, both representational and abstract. Um, so I went, I walked through several times, uh, really honoring um, each piece of art, uh, what they brought to the show, what they brought in and of them of, of in their own way uh, to their own content, of course. Um, and then how the whole show was shaped. So I, I probably, I don't know, I think I took a million passes just looking at each work individually and allowing their work to you know, come forward to me and in not only their artistic technique um, that was being beautifully demonstrated, but uh, the feelings that would be evoked by each piece. Um, but to give each piece its due and respect was uh, extremely important to me as I walked through. And then, then as I was looking at the works, um, how would works, how would they call to me and bring me back um, uh, on an individual basis? And that's when I began okay, this one keeps talking to me, it keeps drawing me in, uh, as well as looking, of course, at the technique, looking at the texture, um, the surface applications, uh, the lighting and shading, um, and getting further into the artistic technique that was demonstrated, um, which I can say you didn't make it easy for me. <laughs> 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 to to make selections was you know you know I wanted everyone <laughs> it's like so you know but that's not the job right so you have to you have to begin to call it down so the perspective of each work um, what was being represented um, and how each composition came together um, kind of final thoughts was. It, I was impressed with the entire collection that was placed in this exhibition. Um, we have a rich artistic community uh, in Dunedin and the surrounding area and, and, and you know, certainly throughout Florida. And I think we need to um, continually honor our artists in the way by, by um, giving them opportunities. And my two, my two sort of tenants in my arts consulting business uh, is that if, if we can elevate the quality of art, can we, we can say yes to that. If there's a project, we say yes, if it elevates the quality of art. And if it, if it supports, um, sustains and retains our artists, um, if we can say yes to that project because it does those things, then I'm all completely on board. <laughs> So that's, um, that's what I would like to share with you. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes. And I do remember that day, how, how carefully and thoroughly you considered each work. And we thank you for that. Well, you're very welcome. Yeah, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, I, I know Catherine and I have judged shows too, and it's never easy, but especially when you have a deep connection to the the theme of the show or the work in front of you, it becomes especially hard. So sorry for the, <laughs> sorry for the tough job. 
<laughs> I was delighted with the tough job. Yeah. <laughs> it's the work we love doing, so it's not a big deal, right? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, thank you. Uh, so we'll, we'll talk to our um, merit awards winner, uh, merit awards winners first. And um, our first merit award, and we're just going in alphabetical order. There's, there's no ranking or anything here. So um, our first merit award uh, was Sue Beach, who did this, this wonderful painting, Spirited. And I'm proud to say that Sue started this painting in my class. Yes. <laughs> um, Saturday mornings. And it just turned out, I don't think I ever saw the finished work in person until now. So I was, you know, it was really, really wonderful to see how you uh, put it all together. Thank you. So tell us more. Um, <clears throat> yes, uh, I was fortunate enough to get into Nathan's From Wetlands to Studio class. And uh, I say fortunate because I think of Nathan as one of the best artists in Florida that I have had the privilege of meeting and working with. So I knew that it would be a really special class. And uh, he brought me out of my comfort zone, which needed to happen. Uh, I was in the school of photorealism when I was in college and have been kind of gradually working my way to realism, impressionism, and gasp, even some, I'm starting to embrace some abstract compositions <laughs> in my work as well, which is very much out of my comfort zone. But uh, we just really enjoyed watching Nathan's process and he painted along with us. So we saw his process of putting your canvas right on the floor on top of large tarps. And we had cups that we were putting, you know, old yogurt cups or whatever, putting paint in and watering it down and like oil painting, working fat over lean. So the first uh, layers were very watery and then eventually you would put new colors and the paint would get thicker. Uh, we were throwing paint, tossing it, dumping it. We even had turkey basters <laughs> that we were using on our painting. So it was very much so way out of my comfort zone, but I really enjoyed that. And, uh, and I made this painting before I knew about the contest, but it occurred to me, um, I have a lot in common with fish. They travel in schools. Uh, I'm a retired art teacher. So I went right from many years of school from the age of five to 22. I had a two week break and then I started my teaching career right after college. Wow. And so I've always been in schools. I was uh, a teacher in four different school systems for 33 years. And so for me, that spirit animal thing has a lot to do with schools of fish working in schools and being a part of a community. I really like being in groups. And to me, fish are always, almost always in groups. The other thing that I associate with the fish is they are very colorful and they're very energetic and uh, they just have a neat way of uh, coloring a landscape for me. Uh, this photograph is from a reference I took at the Tampa Zoo of the koi fish. And so I love their energy and I love their color and excitement. And so to me, it was a very fun process of creating it, but also I associated with a lot of the qualities of the koi fish. Hey. Wonderful, yeah. I love it that, is. I love your, this connection to being a teacher, Sue. So. <laughs> yes, thank you. And I, yeah. this is one of the few, uh, strongly abstract works in the show too, right? As yes, very much out of my comfort zone, but I'm starting to lean towards enjoying that even more. Yay. There was only two fish, the white ones that I wanted to be a little bit realistic looking. Mm. The other ones I wanted you to get the sensation or the illusion of a shape of a fish, mm. you know, knowing that as artists, we are shape makers and storytellers and hopefully entertainers. And so I wanted it to be a very energetic and entertaining type of a piece. Mm, very successful. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, and in terms of the class, you know, we're, it's so much focused on interpretive or the interpretation of something rather than the realism of something. So right. I, I really enjoy how th there's this sense of the fish moving. Um, that's, that's really successful in this piece. It's a gorgeous palette as well. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, the palette's wonderful. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, just a little, give you a little context here. Sue's piece is here, um, back by our first floor painting and drawing studios. So everyone can be inspired by it before they go to class. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, you are an ins very inspiring instructor, Nathan. So thank you. Thank you, Sue. Spread the word. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Next, we'll move out into our lobby um, where we actually, our lobby has multiple award winners here. Um, just this, this one wall alone, we have three. Yes. Um, and our, our first uh, speaker on this wall is Vera Clark Beard for her piece, um, Vermont Fox Mermaid in the Summer. Catherine, you have some, maybe you have some questions for Vera? Well, I first want to say that I was so drawn to this piece and I was delighted that it, uh, Vera's piece received recognition. I personally am, have bought this piece be well before the, the judging took place. And uh, I just was so captivated by everything, the fox, the way that Vera did the sort of waterfall effect, the wing, the, which I, I read as wings, but um, tell us more about this piece, Vera, if you um, could. Oh, sorry, you keep speaking. No, no, go forward, please. Uh, okay, so um, this piece was meant to show elegance instead of my normal scrappy weird work. <laughs> um, I thought as this is a spirit animal because I am shy, but I like to talk if I feel like talking. I added the wings for elegance and the tail. I I like the waterfall idea I, idea I had, but I couldn't see a fox with wings swimming in pools of water. So I added a tail with um, a dinosaur motif on the end with the club. Oh. And I thought of that as very nice. I liked the idea, so I kept it. And my inspiration for this was me and my parents went hiking when I was three or four one time. And um, we in the forest and it was very nice, very wild. All there was was just a trail. And then we came across this big waterfall falling into this little pond. And I remember just standing in front and behind the waterfall. It was a very gentle waterfall, no major falling. And that's where I got the inspiration for these tiny little waterfalls. I went out of my way to make this look elegant and sunsetty, definitely sunsetty, ah. and a lot of time on it. Yeah, you know, I remember when I commented to you about the the wings that you pointed out, it's a single wing and that that was a shadow. Oh, no, 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 that is the shadow, well, not the shadow, but that's like the other wing. Oh, gotcha, oh, good. That one. So sort of the light and dark of our personalities maybe. Yes, it wasn't really supposed to symbolize anything. I was just like, I just added the black wing. So I didn't see, I used the shading with a milli pen. It's basically a marker with a specific color that you choose. And it's just less opacity. So that's why I used mm -hmm. shade. And, but I don't want to draw another one of those wings and then shade them again with the milli pen. So I just decided to fill the wing in the line art color. Yeah, it, it gave a great backdrop to highlight the front one. Uh -huh. yes. And now that you're speaking of it, I do think that that does kind of symbolize light and dark. It sounds nice, so I'm gonna roll with it. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I think we all can relate to the light and dark in ourselves. And you know what I also really was drawn to the, it, the sort of a, a contemplative or a, 
almost a spiritual aspect to the fox's eyes. Yeah, I um, I spent a long time trying to get the fox's face right because you know I didn't want to do separate looking ears and then just the head. Mm. I wanted to do something like a U or a V or something, and then there's the point of um the where the nose should be. I put it at the bottom, going after traditional fox masks from different cultures yes and then and then I'm rendering the eyes so I took African inspired eyes I did a lot of research for the speech I took African inspired eyes mixed it with a type of fox mask that I saw once in like some kind of museum Mm -hmm. and then I just added the little eyebrows because my dog has the little dot for eyebrows in the middle of the black snoot and oh I love that gosh you know now that you identify those sources I so see that and I'm sure that on some level that I was responding to that because I love all those I love all those cultures that you've referenced so I'm gonna hang this in a place of honor in our home for sure and um, the, I, we should point out that it is, a, a, as Vera said, it's a, a digital illustration, which some folks may be more familiar with. I've not tried it myself, but I do love all of the nuances of uh, the colorations and the palette you chose, too. It is very elegant, Vera, and I yeah. congratulate you. Now, um, I use Clip Studio Paint for this there's different tools that are not that similar and some are similar and I'm very pleased to hear that the judge thought this was watercolor because that's actually what I was kind of going for with all the blending yes yes I we I should just mention that before Elizabeth Uh, or as she was judging, it was before we had put up our labels. So she was invited to inquire any sort of background she wanted relating to any piece. But of course there, it was, it made it uh, completely anonymous for her. And, uh, and so that's right. She did think it was a different media. And uh, I'm pleased to hear that. Yes. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Vera. Thanks, Catherine, for your inquiring mind. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Vera, for sharing your, your beautiful artwork with us. Um, Vera isn't the only um, youngster in the show. We do have another um, piece in the show that um, is by, I believe she's also 10. Um, we have a couple couple more. A couple more. So. That's that's what we love about these shows that it really is community oriented and um, you know there's kids as uh, the kids growing up here so we love that here. Nice. Um, our next um, merit award winner is Patricia Clue Derderian. I know I pronounced that incorrectly, <laughs> but uh, we'll love to hear about your piece here, Andalusia and. We just had a, um, a journalist in, and she was describing how her friend uh, was reminded of um, an Ernest Hemingway novel um, that takes place in Spain. Mm. Patricia, are you with us? Yes, I'm here. OK. Tell us more about your work. OK, so um, my painting, so I, I, I call it Andalusia. It's a tribute. Uh, to this animal that um, for which I, I have always felt a strong connection with. Uh, to start, my astrological sign is Taurus, and that made me think very often about uh, all the symbols and meanings um, related to it. Um, and also, I was raised in this small town in the south of Brazil, um, uh, whose economy uh, was based on the cattle farms. And even if I was raised uh, in town, I grew up hearing stories about uh, my, my mother and my grandparents 
uh, in the farm, surrounded by all these animals, and I was all, always amazed by it. And um, in the the experiences that I had in farms, every time I was always drawn to the cows and their kind eyes, and um, how um, I love how they follow you around. They're very curious animals. They want to kind of know what's going on. Um, <laughs> how they can be raised as as big big dogs actually and they they will show you your love and affection mm -hmm. just like uh, our more common pets do mm -hmm. and um, they love to play they show their their emotions and uh, we just don't like to see it because it's not uh, it's hard to to accept that we treat these animals so badly um, mm -hmm. and um, also, um, I, I had the opportunity to leave um, uh, the Spanish culture, which I love uh, very closely, and, um, and to visit Andalusia in Spain, mm -hmm. and uh, to think about the corridas, um, that's the bullfights, and that are shocking for me. Um, but at the same time, they, they make us realize how, how hypocrite we can be. And, um, and that, that all makes me think a lot. And then also there is this gender thing that always bothered me. Like, why is a bull such a strong symbol and beautiful and calling someone a cow is so bad, you know? It's, ah, it makes me think wow, about, yeah. about that. Um, Boy. Yeah, and one of these days that when I was thinking about all that and I was very, I was feeling very emotional and I just, I had to do this piece. I was feeling all this and I had to just put it there. Mm -hmm. And then when I finished, I ended up and I, I ended up depicting the bulls um, because of all the symbols that, that, that they, they are related to. And I wanted to put it out, even though I would love to introduce you to my cows. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm, it's a really powerful piece. And I will also, it's always, you know, such a, where I get excited anticipating what the judge is going to award. And I was really thrilled that Elizabeth chose to honor your piece, but I love it. It has such a boldness and then it has the delicacy of the, the line work and uh, just the treatment, the foreground, the background, the sort of interplay. It's a very powerful piece. And I love hearing your thoughts about it. That just, wow, that just brings it, brings me to a whole other appreciation. Thank Absolutely. You. I, I, I didn't, I guess I, I didn't know that it was so personal, this mm -hmm. subject matter for you. Mm -hmm. So that's really nice to hear. Yes. Thank and, you. and the power, of course, that's the power of your brushstrokes is very expressive as towards mm -hmm. the, the power of the animal. So I grew up on a farm too. <laughs> So I, I know I know about cows and bulls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you all. Thank you very Thank much. You. Um, our next um, merit award winner is not with us today. Her name is uh, Mavis Gibson, and she did this fabulous painting of a goat, a scapegoat, by the way. <laughs> mm -hmm. And um, I'd. For myself, um, I just love how really ghostly her the marks are on this, and it really does have that that look. You know, there's a very um, uh, oh, what kind of look is that, Catherine? It's kind of well, it, it's it's a very uh, exemplary model of a spirit animal, mm. I think. Mm -hmm. yeah, it has a, an ethereal quality, the way Mavis presented it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, Elizabeth. How I, that's how I respond to it. It doesn't really come across here on the screen, but there's a lot of soft blues and grays mm. that uh, the goat is emerging from. The brush strokes are so soft, uh, almost feathery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's sort of emerging from the landscape almost. Mm -hmm. um, well, I wish, I wish we could hear from Mavis, but she's is traveling, so good for her. <laughs> yes, 
And I, I will say that Mavis brought her piece, uh, you know, the, this happens to us when we're putting together a show and things start to come in well after the fact, but um, I'm really happy that we could uh, fit her piece in. She had another small painting in the show, but uh, I'm, you know, it, it's, it's important to us that everybody gets represented. So I don't know that I should broadcast this, but if you're ever after a deadline, I'm a real softy that way. Because <laughs> I really, I really do want everybody to have a chance to participate. Yes. I am too, though. I am too. Because <laughs> it's, I think it's important. Yeah, it is. Um, Kim LaFont is our next uh, merit award winner. She she is not with us, but she did provide us a statement here, so you can read along while I read aloud. Um, she said that I was on a vision quest in the Big Bend area of Texas, which is extremely hot in the summer, by the way. Uh, as I arrived to spend four days fasting in the desert, a coyote blocked my path and would not move out of the road, but instead sat and stared at me. It felt deeply personal. Once I did get by each night as I was falling asleep, the coyotes woke me up yipping and barking. They did it night after night until I was beyond exhausted. When I got home, I looked them up and realized they are the tricksters of the spirit animals, ever reminding us to live lightly and joyfully. Lovely. Yeah, there you go. Yes. I thought this was a red fox when it first came in. And I know my wife, Kate, her grandmother told her a story um, or a sort of piece of wisdom that if you ever come across the path of a red fox, the universe is telling you that you are where you need to be. <laughs> Maybe that applies to coyotes too. I'm not sure. <laughs> this is um, a textile piece, by the way. So all, all of this is, is sewn and embroidered. So there's a lot of cool detail to look at this. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, I noticed that uh, Elizabeth, I will hear more from, from you, I'm sure Elizabeth, but you responded to several of the textile pieces in the show and there were, there were some beauties. Absolutely, this being one of them. Nice that we had that range this time. That's right. Yeah. And I, I think that has something to do with the fact like how Catherine, how how you and and maybe your predecessors, you know, we have the, the quilt and fiber shows every other summer. And so we have a very strong um, community here around that. And so, um, yeah, we would definitely want them to feel welcome to um, apply to all the, the calls for art. Yeah, we have um, DFAC has a long history of biannual uh, fiber shows, summer fiber shows, and in particular quilt shows. Mm -hmm. um, going back before I before I worked here, which is 22 years, and of course we just lost our rainbows and our uh, community quilt shop was family owned over 40 years. That's a big loss. Yeah. Mm. But the fiber arts are thriving at DFAC and we even have a dedicated fiber arts studio, which we uh, uh, assigned when we built our new West Wing. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Lots to take advantage of here. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, backwards. Uh, speaking of fiber and textiles, our next merit award winner is um, Phyllis Patrio. Phyllis, you are with us. You're on our way to us, actually, aren't you, from the East Coast. Um, go ahead and take yourself off mute. Let's see if we lost her. Um, uh oh. Okay, she may, because she was driving, she may have lost connection. Okay, well, I think that we did lose Phyllis. Um, I think she lost her reception since she was on her phone on the way here. Um, so 
what I'd like to do is just read her statement and um, we will cross her our fingers that she'll um, get reception and be able to join us again, at which point we'll talk to her. So uh, this is uh, Phyllis's beautiful uh, fiber textile piece. Um, there's some really nice hand stitching on here. And um, let's read her statement about her piece called My Spirit Animal, Giraffe. When I discovered the exhilaration of the art quilting world, it began with a picture I drew of two giraffes, a mama and a baby. Due to my experience, I see giraffes as a symbol of aspiration. I've been art quilting for five years, often using giraffes as my theme. They remind me to keep my head up in times of conflict and rise above the chaos and take the high road whenever possible. Giraffes reach from the most tender leaves on a tree. The symbolic meaning of seeking the best in life as I aspire to do. They spend their time with their family chewing these tender leaves. I've also read your spine has all your energy chakras or energy centers. Keeping it straight and tall like the giraffe will bring good health. The giraffe to me represents a gentle creature. And uh, for anyone who has met or knows Phyllis um, personally, um, as I have, I can definitely attest to her positivity and really that sense of aspiration that she's talking to. Um, really, I think one of the more optimistic people and positive people that I've, that I've met. So congratulations, Phyllis. Um, we hope that you'll be able to join us. Um, so then the next, our next is um, a student and member here, um, BJ Massey, who's given us this kind of funny watercolor <laughs> of this llama mid-chew or maybe just laughing at us. I'm not sure. These are funny animals. <laughs> BJ is also not with us today. She's um, unavailable, so. I just um, love this piece. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it's it's presented very beautifully. It's on watercolor paper and it's mounted on a panel and then, a, a, you know, a raised beautiful kind of wooden uh, elevated surface. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's the composition. It's so subtle, so simple and so pure. I think what's especially skilled about this is all, all the part of the paper that she didn't paint. That's you know, right. that's, that's, that can be difficult, um, especially with watercolor. Once it's on there, it's on there. So yeah, yeah, that's, that's not easy to do. And then to also do that and get this funny expression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the restraint uh, demonstrated is pretty impressive. Yeah. And, and the sort of liberal use of color here too, you know, this hot pink over here and mixing it with green. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yes, again, a great, I thought it was a great choice, Elizabeth. Glad that you, you honored it. Yeah, the simplicity, the simplicity of it was yes. what, drew, what drew me in and the quirky, quirky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the eyes, the eyes are very soulful. Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, when Vera and I had just returned from Colorado, we took a, a trip out there um, and we, we were north of Salida, Colorado, which is pretty much in the middle of the state. And there was a giant alpaca and llama farm. I mean, mm -hmm. just herds and herds of them. <laughs> wow. imagine, imagine 50 faces like this looking at you. <laughs> Well, one thing I wondered was, because um, some folks said, oh, I wondered if BJ studied with our faculty member, Deborah uh, Thomas Weibel, mm. because uh, it's a similar style that we've seen Deborah work in. But why I, why I wondered that was how beautifully the eyes were rendered. And Deborah is a retired ophthalmologist, and she actually teaches a workshop on eyes, just doing eyes. So I thought, oh, I do wonder if BJ studied with her because this is just. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised because she has, um, she studied with, she took my class as well. I think she takes, she's taken a lot of classes here. Mm. Yeah, she, and she's 
she actually has a, I think she, she was a teacher as well. So she, she's actually um, quite skilled at mm -hmm. uh, her work. Yes. Um, our last merit award winner is Beth Warmoth. Um, she is not uh, available today either. So she provided this statement um, about this big, it's a big, it's a four by three painting. Mm. And the detail on it is really incredible, especially yesterday I was looking up in this ear that there's individual little hairs, you know, in the ear, mm. which is really, really wonderful. Mm. Um, so I'll just read her statement real quick. Um, Beth Warmoth, art explorer, is a professional painter and exotic animal lover. Fascinated by nature's textures, pattern, and colors, Warmoth began the study of animals and drawing realism at a very young age. Now a full-time mural artist, Warmath still takes time in her studio to draw the intricacy of bugs and paint unique animals. Mm -hmm. I have been fascinated by the white tiger since the first day I visited Bush Gardens. The calm yet smooth demeanor as they lay and walk across their stage, unmindful of the thousands of people watching, they seemed so gentle. The white tiger is only alive in captivity and the color is actually a lack of pigment which makes them bad for camouflage in the wild. The white Bengal tiger is rare because they are captured for hunting and beauty. Uh, Catherine, I know you're really good friends with Beth. Do you have you ever noticed the white Bengal in her? Oh, oh, I would say so. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Well, rare, she is a rare beauty, that is for sure. But also that uh I love that the that she identified the, uh, the the calm demeanor. Beth is incredibly uh, kind. And yeah, I think I could see that. She's one of our um, summer camp mural instructors too. She, right, mm -hmm. she takes, she takes um, dozens of, of kids under her wing every summer and they produce yeah. The most amazing murals in summer camp. So she's a, you know, she's a teacher. She's a guide. Um, yeah. yeah. And she, she is regal. And, and I think she is wild. <laughs> <laughs> and the one thing I do want to say that I think that I've seen in Beth's work as we uh, give tribute to teachers is I know Beth studied with Ernie Simmons. Ernest Simmons, who is a very beloved and respected uh, wildlife painter, particularly of birds along the Audubon style. So um, Ernie does extremely detailed, uh, gorgeous work. And Beth did study with Ernie for a number of years. Okay, all right, yeah. Well, um, Phyllis is still missing in action. So we'll move on to our um, placed awards. Uh, which are our third, second and first place awards. Um, third place is DFAC's very own Yay. Isabel Kaiser. <laughs> Isabel? Okay, hi, yeah. Our yeah, tell us more about Spirit of the Forest. Yeah, so it was very difficult for me to pick an animal to paint uh, because I have a very close connection to, to animals um, throughout my whole life. Um, I've always volunteered at animal shelters and things like that. So it took me a very long time first just to decide on an animal. Um, I finally landed on painting a white rabbit. Um, I just really feel that they're very calm and gentle animals and uh, very, almost they look very whimsical and magical. And um, I just really wanted to uh, paint this particular rabbit. Um, and I wanted to also to have a blend between more abstract and more uh, realism. Um, so I try to pay a lot of attention to like the fur and the eyes on the rabbit and then just left the background kind of very loose, very abstract. Um, so yeah, that's, 
that's really all I have to say about this piece. Uh, I had lots of fun painting it and had lots of fun seeing all the other submissions in this exhibit. So yeah. Well, and congratulations on, on it being sold as well. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really yeah. excited about that. That's, that's really great. I guess somebody else likes white rabbits too. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> And I think this is a very fitting spirit animal for you, Isabel. Thank you. And, uh, you said gentle and magical. Yes. <laughs> and the the I mean the painting, the technical aspect yeah. of your painting is wonderful. The brushwork, yes. the the layers, the transparency of the layers, the, uh, the glazing, right? Um, mm -hmm. The warms and cools, and the, as you mentioned, the abstraction opposed to the realism it's it's all wonderful um it's a it's a very intimate painting as well it's a smaller scale and i think yeah. that really serves serves the subject matter mm -hmm. it really draws you in and then yeah. when you get this morning light with it shining through our yeah. gift shop glass it gets really magical this space mm -hmm. <laughs> And then Isabel, you study with Marcasia. So you've studied portraiture, but you studied the a la prima oil painting. Exactly, yes. yeah. Yeah, so um, I do paint a lot of portraits, but I also just love painting animals. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's a nice balance. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you. Um, Elizabeth, you wrote some comments for our placed winners and our best of show. I did. I wonder, wonder if you wanted to share to... your comments. Sure, sure. Um, this artist captured the fragility of the rabbit, its eye aptly reflecting its fear as an animal of prey and its curiosity as well. The background painted in an abstract or impressionistic manner with lively colors ideally supports the more realistic rendering of the rabbit. This artwork deepened the view of a bunny as an animal spirit known for good luck, fertility, and abundance. Ah. Perfect. Mm -hmm. mm. It's always hard to put into words, <laughs> you know, yeah. a response to... Indeed. <laughs> Yeah. Indeed. But looking, you know, looking at, you know, my first impressions and then the subject matters and then the color and materiality mm -hmm. um, and then kind of the final thoughts uh, is really what brought these uh, uh, four works uh, forward. They just kept talking to me. I kept going back to them mm -hmm. um, to it. Well, and to all of the merit winners as well. It was, a, a, you know, it became a real puzzle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and it brought you abundance, Isabel. You sold it and you got a cash award. Yes. Yay. Exactly. <laughs> Good luck and abundance. Yes. Oh, my light turned off. <laughs> well, our, our second place uh, award went to Lorraine Turner, um, who, <laughs> Lorraine, I know you've heard this a million times, but these fabric, this is all fabric and textile sewn together. Mm -hmm. And these are just sort of mind boggling, though, the way that you've pieced them all together. Um, so tell us more um, about this piece in particular. Oh. And thank you, Nathan. And thank you, uh, DFAC. It's always an honor and a privilege to exhibit here. It's just, a, I'm delighted to be a part of the community. This particular exhibit, uh, Spirit Animal, called to me because I am a professional animal communicator. And all of my communications with animal uh, begins with uh, meditation. And so when I go into meditation, I ask if there's an animal that wishes to have their portrait has a message for humanity to please step forward. So all the work that you see, everything I do is, is all with meditation. I'm an author of a meditation book. And so what I love about uh, the owl, the spirit animal, is that I learned in working with animals and animal communication that we all have many, many guides. And there might be something that calls to you and might stay with you very closely throughout your, from childhood, from birth on, but that animals continue to come and go and, and uh, just help help us along our journey. And what I love about this owl, which happens to be a great horn owl, is that when this animal appeared, he made it very clear to me that I needed to take a new perspective. I needed to take a second look. I needed to stop and pause in the silence. And so 
Uh, Silence and Solstice is the name of this piece. And it was created with a lot of different textiles. There's merino wool, tussa silk. There's lace and custom lace that I created with just stitching over water soluble um, stabilizer and then salt I mean, I'll wash away the stabilizer. There's felting in it and you'll see llama, alpaca, um, a lot of different textiles were used. Banana fibers are in here. Yeah. Um, all of the leaves that you see were all uh, basically drawn and stitched using a sewing machine. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you look closely, you'll notice that the thread is a different weight. It's a 12 weight and all the thread painting is in a 50 weight. And that gives that, it's just a great way that you can add texture and uh, dynamic to it would call attention to it so the viewer can call attention to that. If you look closely, you'll see there's a lot of animals hidden within the fabrics. It's not just one big piece of fabric back there. That's a gazillion different pieces of fabric all stitched together. And I always add animals to remind us that uh, we are a community and we live and we uh, need to share the natural resources of our planet. And I think of it as all being connected. And so I always include and put animals throughout all of my work, but it's a joy and a pleasure to see this. Um, I wanna thank you so much for just the recognition for this piece, so. Mm. Now, I, I will say it doesn't come across in the photograph, but in person, the um, chest, the breast of the owl is, is soft. I think it's, is it wool or? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's got a lot of, uh, Alpaca, llama, merino wool, it's all blended together and felted. So I've seen people, they have to stop themselves that you want to pet it. Oh, I know they want to touch it. Someone told me, Catherine, I should make a piece that says, please touch me. <laughs> yes. Now, I will also say that Lorraine, when we talk about our biannual fiber shows, Lorraine had a solo exhibit uh, well, it would have been four years back now, and it was so well received. And I still get requests to give you another show, Lorraine. They say, Is Lorraine coming back? Who was that? I get that. I do get that, that, Catherine. People have people actually travel and drove six hours to come. And I still, to this day, I get people that say, Lorraine, I started following you when I saw your work at the Nadine Divine Art Show. And some of the pieces behind me are from the show. And uh, it, it really was, it's, it's a significant way for us artists to communicate, to have a voice, to be able to, you know, really connect with the community. And I was, uh, I was really honored to be a part of that with Jane Sassman mm -hmm. and Sheila Frampton Cooper, who are now very good friends of mine, thanks to oh, that connection. That. Oh. So yeah, it's just, a, it, it is a joy, really. It's a joy. I have to say, I've I've had a lot of wonderful uh, times in my career, but as a textile artist, it's just like gold. Just I'm really enjoying this, this blend. It's beautiful. That's wonderful. And we should also say that you donate a portion of the proceeds of every piece mm -hmm. to the to environmental causes. This piece, this piece in particular helps the Seaside Seabirds Sanctuary here in Indian Rocks. So all of my bird, other thing this has to do with birds, when it does sell, it goes to that. And I never worry, Catherine, when it's gonna sell because they do sell. Mm. And I just know that it's gonna go for endangered animals, snow leopards, uh, white lions, uh, wherever it's gonna go, it goes. But uh, this particular piece will stay here in Florida. This, this is the funds will stay right here in Florida. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lorraine. Yeah. Thank you. Wonderful. I love it. You have another piece in the show too. It's, it's just as lovely, so. A little not, wine cup. Yeah. Maybe not quite as touchable. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. Thank you. Uh, would Elizabeth, you like, would you yes, like me to read? That'd yes. be wonderful. Yes, mm -hmm. that'd be nice. Uh, this piece demonstrates the fine art of textile or fiber art with its depth of meaning beyond the materials themselves. All of the fore and background materials are beautifully chosen. Their juxtaposition and the mastery of applique ultimately directs our eye to the subject, the owl's eyes and face. Overall, an impressive composition of the wise, silent and intelligent owl. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. Here's some context. This is our long wall here. We have a lot of 
really interesting pieces on this on this wall. Um, just as an aside, here in the lobby we have this marble sculpture by Candy Ryan called Per Love. <laughs> we love this piece. Yeah. It's a great piece to walk into every day. Thank you, Candy. Um, our first place winner um, is Annette Glumis for her painting, her painting Kanthaka. Um, Annette, would you please tell us the story of this piece? Um, yes, I will. Um, it is based on a, a Buddhist uh, story of Kanthaka, who was Siddhartha's favorite faithful horse. Um, and when Siddhartha decided that he wanted to try to find more out about the world and eventually became enlightened and became Buddha, he rode his favorite horse to the Aloma River where he forbade Kanthaka to follow him. And Kanthaka was so heartbroken that he lay down and died. Um, and uh, the story of this is, is that this is not my spirit animal. This was a painting that I made and gave to my dear friend, Heather Richardson, who I know many of you know Heather because she's so active in our arts community. And um, Heather is an exceptional friend and she's always there for me. She's always uh, been my cheerleader through my arts, through my trials and tribulations in my life. Uh, she would do anything for anybody. And in, uh, you know, many, many cultures believe that the white horse, the horse symbolizes faithfulness and trueness and uh, good over evil, valor, travel. And that is Heather. That's Heather's mantra. And uh, it just so happens that the horse is her favorite animal as well. Um, as far as the painting is concerned, um, because the legend has it that Kanthanka lay down and died, they also say that he was reborn as a Brahmin and was able then to reconnect with Buddha and listen to his Dharma talks. Um, so it has a really beautiful significance of rebirth. And uh, while I'm not Buddhist, I do love this story and I love what it sig signifies. The painting, as you can tell, the background is pretty much just that. It's very loose, almost abstract. Yet there is this ominous cloud and sh rain shower, which is trials and tribulations in our life. And then there's the light source, which is hope, discovery. Um, and the white horse itself lying down, it to me, I wanted it to create a sense of peacefulness, of acceptance, but with grace in a sense that it knew that the love it had for its master, it knew in its heart that dying was only a way to reconnect with his master in the future life. And so I think for me, it gives me a sense of peacefulness to know that when you're right in your heart, everything's gonna turn out just the way it's supposed to. And I really love that thought. I do also wanna thank everyone that put together this exhibit that worked so hard to hang it. And the judge, Elizabeth, thank you very much for choosing my piece. Um, and also Paige McBride who wrote an amazingly beautiful touching poem while viewing my painting. Thank you so much. Yes. <laughs> thank you and that. Thanks for sharing in that. Yeah. It's a real power piece that it's a monumental painting and it greets visitors. It's sort of the the welcome to the art center. It has been for the last six weeks and we've been honored to have it. Thank you. And the story is just so that your statement uh, about the story behind the painting and also about your friendship with Heather is posted so people can. Hey, thank you. <laughs> yes. And, and you're so right. Paige was absolutely moved and uh, 
pull the chair up right in front of your painting, which I think you have a photograph of her doing so. And she med meditated on the painting and, and took probably a few hours to write that, that beautiful piece. Well, it is beautiful, Paige, thank you. And thank Elizabeth, you. would you like to share your comments about sure. much of it's been stated but I, I certainly <laughs> I certainly will um, <laughs> the overall composition and perspective of this piece demonstrate artistic mastery the form of Buddha's horse the white stallion Kathanka peacefully awaiting Buddha's return beside the river is beautifully depicted the white light in the distance foreshadows Kathanka's death by a broken heart and his reincarnation to another life. The artist has deepened the traditional animal spirit image of a horse. Yes. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> yeah, this, the painting on this is, is lovely. Really, really, really lovely. And yes, I think that the scale of it too, I think, you know, it really is very impressive when you walk in, um, it really sets the tone for your experience here at the Art Center. So thank you, Annette. You're welcome. Well, Heather's an impressive person. She's been missing it too, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Came to see the painting in the in the at the center and said, Oh, my house feels so empty. <laughs> All right. <laughs> thank you so much. You're welcome. Well, that leaves us with our, our best of show here. Um, it's a lovely painting by Kristen Santucci. Let me, sorry, let's pick up there. There we go. Uh, called Mystical Advisor. I've met a few smart crows in my life, <laughs> or ravens as it may be. Um, so she's sent along this statement. She's um, working today, so can't join us. Uh, she says, my painting, Mystical Advisor, is an oil painting on gessoed panel. In this painting, I use a palette knife quite a bit, along with a brayer roller for texture. I also painted in several layers and used a walnut oil alkyd medium to get the desired ethereal effect. I have always been drawn to crows and ravens and have painted them many times over the years. The crow represents mystery, intelligence, fearlessness, and a bit of mischief. The perfect spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. We are. We're all a bit mischievous <laughs> and mysterious. <laughs> well, since um, Christian isn't here, um, Elizabeth, tell us your thoughts on on this piece. Well, I'll start here. Um, the drama and composition of this piece, which is with its focus solely on the crow, captured this observer. The blending of glazes for background and branch colors is sublime in their seeming sub simplicity, which drives the focus to the crow. The face of the crow depicts his keen intelligence. And I, I, I raised a crow with my husband who had raised two other crows. Um, I live in Dunedin and there's, there's six oak trees on the property and the parents, um, uh, kicked out the three out of three babies out of their nest because they had crop disease. Yeah, they had crop disease and, and two of them didn't make it, but this third one made it. And uh, we named him Skipper and he lived in our backyard for a while as my husband taught him how to come down uh, from the top of his condo um, <laughs> to get food and then to go back up and we would bring him out and he would fly from arm to arm um oh. and yeah yeah and then he uh, he eventually started taking off but then he would come back to us and stay at night in the condo oh. um, until he finally went away and then the next year he came back with a mate um <laughs> so it's it's been and, and there's more to the story but um you know i i resisted the personal connection <laughs> how could you how could but but they, he, they so he literally he literally left the nest <laughs> he left the nest he did <laughs> he did we had to get up on the house a, a couple of times because he didn't know how to come down into our courtyard which is where his home was 
uh, in the condo was that that my husband had built for him. So we had to, our neighbors thought we were just nuts that we were, you know, <laughs> communicating with this little sweetheart and, and bringing him back to health, um, which we did take him to a vet. And turns out that it's natural for them to create a uh, sort of a calcium around a uh, uh, around any material that it needs to be expelled from the body and they push it out of the skin it grows literally out of the skin oh. and so, yeah so the vet uh, uh, quickened that process and um, <sighs> then he came home and the rest is history, <laughs> but the, but this, but this particular work, I think as you know, the, all of, all of the works were, um, and as you were talking about them, I'm, I'm getting emotional because of my, the impact that the word works had upon me as I, I viewed them. Mm -hmm. And, um, so again, I thank you for that before I cry. <laughs> uh... <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I also very much appreciated you acknowledging uh, the land of the Tokabago. Yes. And you know, Elizabeth, yeah. I wanted to ask you about that because I don't think in the Dunedin Historical Museum that they do that they identify who the native peoples were. I mean, we know that they were over in Safety Harbor, but but uh I, I want to know, I want to hear your take on that sometime, maybe not now. Okay. <laughs> is, uh, okay. You know, this is an important practice for every museum conference and gathering to acknowledge the land of the indigenous peoples. And today is the uh, indigenous people day, is it? Um, Friday was, Friday. I think. Thank you. I think Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe it was yesterday. Sorry, <laughs> I should know that. I <laughs> and I and I I I I'm a mess of meetings right now, so I'm not sure <laughs> quite when. But I've been bringing that that statement forward, um, both when I'm doing my work in Saint Petersburg as well as for, you know, the city of Dunedin, because um, we're kind of the reason why why we're they're the reason why we are here, and just to honor the land that that they inhabited um it's it's important to do so absolutely um i also want to mention before i forget that in connection with spirit animals but also tying into the other fall exhibits we will be having a virtual talk with velva lee Harity who is a Jungian analyst. She's written a book called Dream Mama, and she's going to do a talk about um, animal symbology in Jungian, uh, in Jungian terms. So we'll look forward to that. That's going to be November 17th, and that'll be a one o'clock gathering. So we'll be sure to make, to reach out to all of our spirit animal artists to make sure that you know about that and can join us if you're interested. It's sure to be really interesting. Yeah, it's it's going to be illuminating. I, I've known Velva for quite a while, um, having lived in, you know, I live in St. Pete and I've been to her place and checked out her collection and we've talked about Jungian stuff <laughs> on her radio show when she used, she used to be on the radio. Um, so yeah, it's going to be really great to have her, her insight on, on this subject. Well, that wraps it up for today. And we just want to thank again, all of our artists um, for their creativity and inspiration and creating this Zootopia for us, uh, which we're going to miss. Um, we have our annual holiday show coming up. So mm. that'll be fun <laughs> to uh, see that all of that. Um, and also would again, like to thank Elizabeth um, for your expertise and your vision and um, and your sensitivity also towards our community and their creation. Um, this is being recorded. <laughs> so uh, it'll be up on our YouTube page. Uh, go to YouTube and you can search Dean Fine Arts Center um, and then press videos. And there's oogles and boogles of content there. Um, so if you ever I'd like to watch something related to the arts, uh, specifically here at Dunedin. 
uh, check that out. Um, and please don't miss uh, our next Zoom with the artists of Beasts and Burdens, Ardana Kerr and Christian Zvonik. Um, Beasts and Burdens is the show I curated. Um, thank you, Catherine, for that opportunity. Um, thank you. It is in our Intel Family Gallery. And um, this is surely going to be a great talk. Um, you have to come see this show. There's no other way to put it. Um, it's they're really mind boggling, the, the both the drawings and the glass work. So come on in and see it and then join us next Friday at one, one o'clock. Um, and then just to as a reminder, our current hours are 10 to 5 Monday through Friday. Um, here's our Children's Museum and hands on center hours. Um, we are still practicing uh, COVID health and safety protocols, masks are required and taking temperature checks at the door. So thank you for uh, helping us protect our community. Um, Catherine, do you have any additional news or? The only thing I wanted to add is uh, since we have had no weekend hours during the pandemic, come November, we will be open Saturdays and we are very happy about that. Uh, it was a staffing issue because we lost significant part of our staff. And so we're, we're moving back in the right direction. And we also will have the opening of One Day Tampa Bay next Friday in the upstairs teaching gallery. And we will be welcoming the works of Sadashi, Sadaje Tatsoshi, who will be featured in our atrium and Sadaji is our first guest curator who will be presenting her own vision next summer 2022. Well, thank you everyone for joining us. Um, we hope you have a wonderful weekend and um, hope to see you at the center soon. Yes. Thanks everyone. <laughs>